Remember that night in February 2013 when Stephen Curry absolutely destroyed one of the best Knicks rosters in years? Even though it's been 11 years, I remember it like it was yesterday. And that cold night not only completely changed Stephen Curry's NBA career, it would change basketball forever. And that's despite the fact that, well, the Warriors ended up losing the game. You see, Steph's explosion in the NBA was not like the rest of the superstars. In addition to being sudden and mostly unexpected, Curry had a unique characteristic, and that is that he didn't really look like any other player who had already passed through the league. His play style would have been a big issue to any coach a couple of decades ago, and his shot selection looked like something out of a video game. But what no one knew was that that night in Madison, an unrepeatable superstar would be born who would dominate the NBA for the rest of his career. Scoops it up and in. I mean, his impact was so enormous that there is reason to believe that there will never be another player like him in the future. It was like eight losses, that's, that's enough. <laughs> but before we want to understand the future, we have to understand the past. Steph's father, Del Curry, was a sharpshooter long before either of his sons came into the league. His game was much more similar, in fact, to Seth's than Steph's. Drafted by the Utah Jazz with the 15th overall pick in the 1986 draft, it took a while for the father of two of the greatest shooters in basketball history to find his role in the NBA. But before he did, when Dell was playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers, he was blessed with the birth of his first child. By chance or fate, Stephen Wardell Curry was born in Akron, Ohio specifically on the same floor of the same hospital where a certain LeBron James was born a few years earlier. A coincidence that would be nothing more than a sign of the destiny to which both players were destined, which was greatness. But with a father who was not only passionate about basketball, but who was one of the NBA's best sixth man for nearly a decade, Steph was destined to awaken his passion for this sport. Del Curry was curiously one of the players drafted in the 1988 expansion draft, so the family moved to North Carolina accompanying the father. This was the reason Steph grew up in Charlotte, where he played much of his high school career. But despite making a difference early on, his lack of athleticism and his 160 pound frame did not allow him to choose his favorite destination when it came to being recruited. To follow his father's legendary career, Steph wanted to play at Virginia Tech. However, the college did not offer him a roster spot. So the three-star prospect had to choose Davidson's offer. Yes, you heard right. Stephen Curry was a three-star prospect coming out of high school. But Davidson had been trying to recruit him since 10th grade, so Steph went back to his hometown to play for the Wildcats. This would kickstart a legendary career that spanned three seasons. A guard who came in with no expectations and ended up skipping a year of the college cycle simply because he was considered a consensus lottery pick in the NBA. During his first season at Davidson, Curry was selected as the Southern Conference Freshman of the Year and eclipsed the school scoring record with astounding ease. And his averages only increased during his sophomore season, in which he averaged 26 points a night and was selected to the Associated Press's All-American second team. And although after his sophomore season, Curry would have certainly been drafted, Steph knew that with his physicality, he would not be able to translate his skills to a shooting guard role in the NBA. And the problem was that shooting guard was the position he was playing in Division I. So, with the advice of Chris Paul, he decided to return for his junior year at Davidson, where this time, playing the point guard position, he was able to increase his assist averages from 2.9 to 5.6 per game. Steph offered a different profile to scouts who were becoming more and more interested in the game of this rare player who averaged over 40% in three-pointers with almost 10 attempts per night. And after leading the entire NCAA in scoring and taking Davidson on an insane NCAA tournament run, Curry knew he was ready to enter the NBA draft. Golden State Warriors select Stephen Curry from Davidson College. It was, of course, the Golden State Warriors who selected Steph with the seventh pick in the 2009 draft. A team, by the way, that already had another star guard on its roster, Monte Ellis, who during Curry's rookie season averaged 25.5 points per game. And that NBA was not like today's, where there are 14 players averaging at least 25 points. With that average in 2010, Monte was the sixth highest scorer in the entire league. So what does that mean? Well, obviously Steph wasn't gonna have as much room to shine. But Monte wasn't the only reason that caused Steph to not be able to explode until years later. His weak athleticism was coupled with his severe ankle injury problems. 
Curry not only missed his first NBA game due to injury, but he missed 40 games out of 66 during the lockout year, which was his third season in the league. It was so surprising that the former Warriors general manager Bob Myers once said that he had never seen someone sprain their ankle in the non-traditional crazy ways that Curry did, and that he hasn't seen it since. It was even to the point that ESPN dedicated an entire article to him years later with the topic that Steph had the best, worst ankles in sports. Worst of all, the doctors realized that the recoveries were getting tougher and tougher, and it was likely that Curry had a chronic ankle injury. According to their theory, there was a possibility that the guard would never have continuity in the league. Comparisons began to emerge with players like Grant Hill, one of the greatest what-ifs in NBA history whose career was blighted by terrible ankle injuries. And this was the moment when Bob Myers made the best decision in franchise history. During that lockout season, the GM decided to trade Monte Ellis to the Milwaukee Bucks in exchange for a defensive-minded center like Andrew Bogut. And in a trade in which it looked like the Warriors lost one of the best talents in the league, what no one knew was that the best talents were actually the ones who would now have room to shine. A decade later, Myers not only proved to have won the trade, but proved that the theoretically worst guard in their stellar backcourt was going to become arguably the greatest point guard of all time. I mean, it's either Steph or Magic Johnson. There is simply no other choice. Four championship rings, one finals MVP, 10-time All-Star, eight-time All-NBA team, two-time league-leading scorer, and two-time NBA MVP one of them unanimously for the first time in the history of the league in an individual season that was practically unsurpassed. He's a four-time NBA champion, a two-time league MVP, goes to Stephen Curry! In fact, the 2015-2016 season is one of the most iconic in the NBA for many reasons. The 73-9 record, LeBron James' finals comeback, Kobe's retirement, and the absurd season in which Steph Curry dominated the entire league with shots like this one. The man posted 30 points per game on 50% shooting from the field, 45% from long range with 11.2 attempts per game, and 91% on free throws. But what's even crazier is that that scoring ability since 2016 has remained virtually untouched. In December 2021, and at only 33 years old, Curry surpassed Ray Allen's historical mark of three-pointers, becoming the maximum three-point shooter in NBA history. But how did he achieve that so young? Well, by being the player with the most three-pointers attempted and scored in the entire league for eight seasons, including the current one, by the way. Essentially, Steph turned the Warriors, who had not reached the Western Conference Finals for 38 years and had qualified for the playoffs once in the last 18 years, into a dynasty that has dominated the NBA until practically this season. And I assure you, there is nothing more important in basketball than transforming a franchise from top to bottom with your presence alone. And although it is true, as we have said, Steph did not change only the Warriors, his play style changed the entire NBA. Curry has made every kid and teenager in every corner of the world want to wear the 30 on his back. Kids in the park are no longer making sky hooks or fadeaways from mid-range. Kids are throwing up bombs from 35 feet away after making a step back. His jersey is the best selling in the NBA for a reason. But Steph, unlike what many people think, is not just a shooter. The conception of being a point guard who often plays off the ball meant that his handles were slow to be appreciated. We are talking about one of the best handlers in NBA history, right? It's true that he's not the best passer in the league, but that's not an attribute he really needs. And that's because Steph is one of the few players in the league who is just as effective on the ball as he is off the ball. Imagine you're a coach and one of your players is a walking magnet that sucks defenders to him. Curry's gravity on the court became an absolute cheat code that opposing coaches couldn't find an answer to. His ability to shoot from any position and under any circumstances forced one or even several defenders to stay close to him as if they were his shadow. And far from moving away and allowing his team to attack in four-on-four -four situations, which are always beneficial for the attacking team because of the extra space, Steph knew how to make the most of the attention they had to give him. Perfectly. I repeat, perfectly. Steph Curry may be the best off-the-ball player in the entire history of the NBA. His tremendous speed and agility coupled with a system, first from Mark Jackson and then Steve Kerr, that relied on the offensive motion allowed Steph to drive his defenders crazy for years and years. He didn't need to have the ball. In fact, 
He's the kind of player who needs half a second to shoot from the moment he receives a pass. And the gravity he generated was not only useful for his teammates, but for himself when it came to generating mismatches, thanks to his ability to force defenders to switch on screens. And man, I don't think there's a worse nightmare for a big man than being left in an ISO with this freaking alien right here. From any of the three levels, a machine gun from long range with incredible handles, an agile shooter from mid range, an elusive and smart driver when it comes to finishing at the rim, extremely efficient too, by the way, Steph Curry was and is the complete scorer, the unstoppable player that everyone tries to irritate for years but failed to capture the essence of. Steph was technically so good that he was the first combo guard in NBA history to reach the top, influenced by players like Gilbert Arenas or even his former teammate Monte Ellis. Curry promoted a trend that years later gave us talents like Damian Lillard and that with time is completely dismantling our idea of a pure point guard. Just like Allen Iverson, Steph changed the game forever. First, from the individual point of view, creating this new type of mobile player capable of scoring from any distance, and then from a collective point of view, creating new offensive systems that reinforced his strengths and caused the league's pace to increase for almost a decade. In an era when playoff basketball was purely defensive, Jackson's and then Kerr's Warriors proved that shooting volume and math were capable of dominating traditional basketball. Shooting 50% on twos is just as efficient mathematically as shooting 33% on threes. And while there aren't many players in the league who are capable of shooting 50% on twos, virtually every perimeter player in the NBA is capable of shooting above 33% on threes. This philosophy of play, however, was not universally accepted. The Golden State Warriors and Mike D'Antoni's Houston Rockets were the only franchises that dared to swim against the trends that had been intrinsic to basketball for decades. The mid-range was gone. Also, many historic teams based their game on having an incredible defense and an offense that lets you get out of your own way, whereas now it's the other way around. Teams are looking for an unstoppable offensive system that allows you the luxury of having a slightly above average defense, because the last champions, the Denver Nuggets, proved that it was effective. In fact, it could be said that we have already driven into a new era. The three-point revolution that Steph largely caused has given way to the pace and space era, which has virtually destroyed all the traditional positions and mixed up the existing roles, players are getting bigger, especially guards, and teams are getting better in transition. The basketball that Kerr invented is even being eclipsed by new philosophies that are capable of containing these long-range killers. Well, most of them. Curry has proven, much like the all-time greats, that his performance is not dependent on either an era or a system. He has remained one of the most dominant players in the league even at nearly 36 years old right now. And to this day, he is still at least one of the top 10 players in the entire NBA. I mean, the other night he dropped 60. And the luxury of aging like that. No, not everyone can afford it. We're talking about talents like LeBron James or Kevin Durant, who year after year have been able to revamp their game to remain elite during eras when they should have already been replaced. So why won't there be another Steph Curry? Because after busting every team's tail for years and years and changing the NBA forever, every coach has changed their defensive schemes to try to contain him. So for a guard to be considered as good as him, at the very least, he's going to have to have changed the game. All right, that's it for this video. Let us know what you thought down in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.